Hi friends, in 2021 I released Woke the Movie, which was my attempt to link numerous internet conspiracy theories into a shared universe, kind of like the MCU. In the film we talk about many strange concepts that are often waved off as absurd by normal society. And explore the strangest of these topics, we relied heavily on the accounts of six self-described whistleblowers. However, there's one area where all six whistleblowers are in agreement on something that's too outrageous for even the most intrepid conspiracy theorists. Reptilians? So reptilians. The reptilians. The reptilians. The reptilians. The reptilians. The reptiles. They're ugly looking lizard alligator type people. Come on, we couldn't leave this one out. Reptilians is regarded right up there with Flat Earth when it comes to the bottom of the crackpot conspiracy barrel, a notion that didn't even exist until complete morons were able to learn how to use the internet. However, this one's actually been around a lot longer, and it's almost always tied with a theory known as the Hollow Earth. And while some have taken this literally, a more common and realistic interpretation is that Earth's crust is composed of large open areas, able to support civilizations that can adapt to a life underground. There are caverns all over this planet which different extraterrestrial civilizations have been using. There's oceans and forestry and all sorts in the pockets in the inner earth. And while proponents of this theory like to point out the abundance of reptile related imagery found among ancient artworks as evidence for human contact with these beings, skeptics would be quick to point out that man, throughout history, has depicted all sorts of animals in artworks and mythology, like birds, fish, and lions and in many cases given them human-like characteristics. However, reptiles are far and away the most represented. Nothing else even comes close. Officially, serpent worship goes back 70,000 years with tribes in Botswana. Snakes were also worshipped by the Olmecs in Mexico. Throughout South America, serpents were depicted with feathers, perhaps suggesting that they could fly. And ancient mythology of native Australians teach that humans are created by the dreams of a lizard. Egypt and Sumer also had their reptile deities. And ancient legends and works of art from around the globe clearly depict reptile-type people, such as the Nagas, or snake people in India. Even today, snake symbolism is so abundant, you hardly notice it. And depictions in pop culture of super smart reptiles are common. And according to my whistleblowers, it's not just one race of these guys, there's several. There's six or seven types of uh, reptilians that are on this planet. Some snakes, some velociraptor looking, some actually look like dinosaurs. Mars Marine Randy Kramer also describes encountering natively evolved reptoids on Mars. If we're either evolved or genetically, you know, altered from primates, they are evolved or genetically altered from, you know, little rock lizards. So it turns out that if aliens ever show up here on Earth, a new study indicates that they'll probably be more like super intelligent dinosaurs, as smart and as cunning as humans. We would be better off not meeting them. You see, most of the hubbub regarding the reptilian conspiracy centers around a race of vicious warlike creatures known as the Draco. They aren't really reptilian, instead they're higher dimensional beings that prefer to manifest themselves in this dimension as scary ass dragon people. The Draconans themselves did not evolve as a, a life form in our universe. They were dumped here. They're just a pain. They're incredibly smart, they're incredibly psychic, they're incredible builders, but they're bullies. If, you know, they're bullies, and they have a bully, arrogant bully attitude. Their whole thing is control. Whenever you see one, you ought to just run like hell. But since they're so crafty, they tend not to battle with the human race directly. You have the Dracos uh, influencing the president of your country. This okay, so are we talking Eisenhower, Truman, who are talking, all of them? Yeah, all of them. By the time Eisenhower stepped into office, the draconian system had already infiltrated the three-letter organizations, and eventually defense-related projects got infiltrated as technology exchanges took place. In fact, for millennia, they've been able to exert their will over the whole of humanity by working through human or semi-human proxies, usually members of elite families who hold high positions of power. You have to use the front human human you know form to do yeah, it. Yeah, because it's too reality, shocking otherwise. This, this consciousness of the human stream that's here now is so used to just seeing and being told that the human being is at the top of the food chain and we're the rulers of this and that and we're that that um, it's too shocking to bring in a new species and do it. It's not conducive to keep the control. Which brings us to the trait that they're most known for. 
They have the ability to shift and look like a human. It's a misconception that, that they are actually shape-shifting. Some are, but what they're actually doing is altering your visual cortex to yes. make you think you're yes. seeing them that yes, way. Yes, absolutely, yes. The shape-shifting is just one of those extra things that makes this story sound so silly for most of us. Normally, I would agree. If it weren't for the fact that the reptile changing into human archetype has been with us for quite a while, this too is ever-present in our culture today. Has anyone asked why? Why shape-shifting reptiles are everywhere? Even children's shows, like the Dino Squad, which features shape-shifting teenagers fighting crime. Is it all just a big coincidence? Or are insiders purposely leaking this stuff into the culture? Do they know who's really calling the shots? The enemy isn't human at all. But it's pushing all our buttons so that we're so busy looking at each other and so neurotic about each other that we're not looking at the real, the real reality here, the real cause, which is another race or races that are here who are totally playing games with us, feeding off our energy and hoping that we destroy ourselves so that they can keep the planet. And from really, These beings are foreign. They're, they're from another universe. And so for them to be able to be here, they kind of utilize us as a, as a food source and We say exist. they're utilizing us as a food source. Is that as an energetic food source or as a physical? Are they eating Both. humans? They're carnivorous. Are you saying carnivorous, they eat humans? Yes. They won't eat a dead human. It has to be alive at the time of the killing. Their preference is children. There's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives cannot be traced anywhere. You know, Westchester County, in the last five years, 3,000 children in Westchester County, New York, have vanished without a trace. Where are they going? Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases, and they are summarily done away with, and they are literally eaten. These children were food. And I'm supposed to just shut up and not say anything about it because people don't want to hear it? That's tough. That's tough. And yet, this idea is also backed up by thousands of years of artistic depictions of reptiles consuming people. But if this were actually taking place on a large scale, then it might explain some of the strange anomalies with some of these missing person cases. Every year, hundreds of people are reported missing in national parks and forests, many of them children. But a small percentage of the cases have search and rescue crews continuing to scratch their heads. The year 1997 set a record for missing persons in the United States, with a staggering number of almost one million reported missing, just in that year alone. Now, I'm not saying that all of them wound up as lizard food, but clusters of missing person cases, especially near national parks, are quite bizarre. Former police chief David Politis now spends his life trying to get to the bottom of these strange disappearances. So if there's mental illness, we probably won't touch it. If it's a voluntary disappearance, we won't touch it. If there's evidence of animal or human predation, we won't touch it. And they're either going to find you there or they're going to find pieces of you there and they're going to find drag marks there. And then the canines that are brought in are going to be able to track your scent exactly to where the body is. In Plytus' documentary, Missing 411, presents many strange anomalies associated with these cases. In a lot of these cases, search and rescue, or the volunteers searching people, have already gone over certain areas, not once, not twice, but even dozens of times. And then, the child is found there, maybe a year, maybe a few years later. There's some cases where little kids are alleged to have walked up to 20 miles overnight, or climbed phenomenal heights, three and 4,000 feet. Those are facts, and it's highly, highly hard to believe. Are groups within the higher echelon that are actually helping them that's part of the deal they won't come up as long as we feed them down there you understand it's about human beings selling themselves out but is there any evidence of this anything to suggest that it's more than just an imaginative horror story well perhaps the next time you're in Oslo Norway you should take a stroll to the peaceful Frogner Park you'll probably notice a statue garden, all designed by famed Swedish sculptor Gustav Vinglet, who is best known for designing the Nobel Peace Prize. And perhaps you might notice something unsettling about these statues.
perhaps a message hidden in plain sight. A message that they knew you would never understand the meaning of. This is where the, the battle is, between light and dark. You've got the greys over us, you've got the reptilians underneath us, and between us you've got humanity, sandwiched in the middle, wondering what the hell is going on here. Sounds pretty crazy, huh? Well, I bet you have no idea how deep this goes. Please subscribe if you wish to continue this journey, or better yet, watch Woke the Movie out now. Thanks for watching.